Hello everyone, my name is James, and welcome to Physics Review Introduction to Mechanics. Today we're going to be talking about speed, velocity, and acceleration. Now just a warning before we begin, this is going to be a very brief overview of speed, velocity, and acceleration. In my next video, we're going to delve much further into velocity and acceleration, and work on more complex pro word problems, and use more complex formulas. So if you already have a pretty good idea of speed, velocity, and acceleration, please skip over to the next video. So let's begin. First, let's talk about the difference between speed and velocity. Now, to most, it may seem that speed and velocity are pretty much interchangeable. They both talk about how fast something's moving. But in actuality, there's a pretty big difference between speed and velocity. Velocity has a directional component, but speed has no directional component. So basically what that means is not both speed and velocity tell you how fast something is moving, but velocity will tell you in which direction it is moving. So now let's talk about this directional component of velocity. So first, let's look at a compass rose. Let's say I say to move 10 meters per second eastward. So 10 meters per second would be the rate that I'm telling you to move at, and east would be the direction. So there's your direction and rate. And that's pretty simple to understand. You just move 10 meters per second eastward. The same thing if I said move 10 meters per second westward. Well, west would be the direction, and 10 meters per second would be the rate. So you move 10 meters per second in the west direction. Now instead of using east and west, let's use positive and negative. Now most of the time you will see velocity coupled with a directional component that's either a positive or a negative. So again, let's say we're sitting at the origin, and I say let's move 10 meters per second positively, you'd move to the right, and if I said move 10 meters per second negatively, you'd move to the left. Now the important thing to remember with the directional component of velocity is that whenever you're referring to direction, positive or negative, you're assuming that you are at the origin. Now the origin, which is on your screen now, you control wherever you control where that origin is. You can move it wherever you want, and then also with that, you can switch the positive and negatives and move those wherever you want. All you have to do is indicate it in your work so that people know which, which direction you're talking about. So that should hopefully clear up the directional component of velocity and any confusion involved with that. Now let's talk about how you'd find the velocity of a moving object. Now the most common equation you're going to use to find the velocity of a moving object is v is equal to d over t, where v is velocity, d is distance, and t is time. So now let's look at the um, units for velocity. So distance we almost always measure in meters, and time we almost always measure in seconds. So the units for velocity, for velocity are meters per second. Now I'm going to show a little clip for you. Here you have a dragster. It's moving down a quarter mile. Now it moves from the start of that quarter mile to the end of that quarter mile in 8 seconds. So let's find the average velocity of this dragster. So now just as a conversion, a quarter of a mile is 400 meters. So we know that that dragster is covering 400 meters in 8 seconds. So we can plug in 408, divide 400 by 8. We find that the average velocity of this dragster is 50 meters per second. So now let's talk about what this 50 meters per second really means. Basically, when you say 50 meters per second, it means on average, that dragster is covering 50 meters of distance every second. Now here we don't have a positive or a negative. But let's say the start line of the dragster where the dragster start and the, was positive. Well, sorry. Let's say where the dragster started was the origin. And down where the dragster ended was the positive direction and behind the dragster was the negative direction. So really we should say velocity is equal to positive 50 meters per second because the dragster was moving away from the origin in a positive direction. So that's kind of velocity for you. A brief overview of how you fly in velocity with v is equal to d over t. Now here we have the equation again, v is equal to d over t. But the important thing to remember is that this is not just one equation. We can use three, find three equations from this one equation. So how do we do this? First we can cross multiply and essentially switch the t and the v. And we, you see we get the equation t is equal to d over v. Now this equation, it's essentially the equation before, 
except now we can find the time if we know the distance and the velocity in objects moving. Now if we multiply both sides by V over 1, the Vs cancel out, and we find that Vt is equal to D. Now this is a third variation of the, equa the equation. Here we can find the distance that an object moves if we know its velocity and the time it was going at that velocity. So from this original equation, v is equal to d over t, we're able to find two other equations that are both equally valid. But also, the important thing to remember here is that these three equations, they're equally valid, and they all have situations where they're important, and we'll need to use them in later videos. But right now, it's just important that you understand how we found these equations, and remember them, so when it comes up time to use them, you know them. Now let's talk about acceleration. So we're going to play the dragster clip one more time. Notice how at the star line, the dragster is moving at 0 meters per second. It's just staying still. But then, its speed gradually gets faster, faster, and faster. So what do we call this increase in speed? Or velocity in this case? We call it acceleration. So let's look at the general formula to find acceleration. The general formula to find acceleration is acceleration is equal to the change in velocity of an object over time. So let's find the acceleration. Uh, so first let's talk about the units for acceleration. So change in velocity. The way we find change in velocity is we take the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Well since velocity is always measured in meters per second, the change in velocity is in meters per second. Now time, we always measure time in seconds. So the units for acceleration are meters per second over seconds or meters per second squared. Now notice there is no difference between writing meters per second over seconds or meters per second squared. They both mean the same exact thing, it's just different forms of writing it. And they're both equally valid. So now let's find the acceleration of that dragster. So the change in velocity. I said that the dragster started at zero meters per second, it wasn't moving. And its final velocity was 100 meters per second. So we do 100 meters per second minus 0 meters per second, and we find the change of velocity is 100 meters per second. Now it changed, it went from 0 meters per second to 100 meters per second in 8 seconds, so that would be our time. So we do a divide 100 by 8, and we find that the acceleration of this dragster is 12 meters per second squared. So now what does this 12 meters per second squared really mean? Basically what it means is if no time had elapsed, if we allowed that dragster to accelerate for zero seconds, that dragster would be moving zero meters per second. Makes sense, right? But let's say we allow that dragster to accelerate for one second. Then at that one second, the dragster would be moving 12 meters per second. Now let's say we have our dragster at zero again, and we let it accelerate for two seconds. Now at the end of two seconds, the dragster would be moving 24 meters per second. Now let's say we take our dragster back to zero, and we let it accelerate for three seconds. At the end of three seconds, that dragster will be moving 32 meters per second. So you see, every increase in one second is an increase in velocity of 12 meters per second. And that's essentially all acceleration is, is that the velocity continually increases in a constant interval. So that should be a brief overview of acceleration for you using the equation acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. Now just with the velocity equation, we can take this original acceleration equation and reconfigure it into two other equations. And those are equations are shown now. Now again, all three of these equations are equally valid, but what they do is they allow us to solve for different variables, which become very important when we look at more complex word problems. So that's all for this video. Thank you for joining me. And look out for the next video where we're going to be going much further into this acceleration velocity and using much more complex word problems and equations to solve them. Thank you, and I hope this was helpful.